What's the best cartridge for home defense? There's a lot to choose from, and Dave and I are going to talk about it. Hello, friends and lovers. This is Dave Trillo, and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Chris, I want to defend my home against people who want to hurt me inside my home, and I need a gun to do that good. Dave, you are absolutely right. And, uh, you know, sure, you could use a pointy stick, you could use a knife, but there's an old saying, you know, God made all men and Sam Colt made them equal. And uh, a firearm really helps you when defending the home against home invaders, unwanted varmints, as we like to say here on the channel. Uh, and if you are here for the first time, make sure you get down there and click that subscribe button. Make sure you click the like button there as well. Help the channel grow. And of course, make sure you click on that link down in the pinned description and in the comments section uh, to get your free coupon here at ammo.com. Get $20 off that order. You can't beat that. But yeah, if you want to defeat a home intruder, that is, we've got some of the best cartridges to do that and we're going to kick it off with a classic i'm sure you all are sick of hearing about it but it's got to be the nine millimeter luger yeah but this one you're going to get the most options for ammo training ammo self-defense ammo but chris why has this become pretty much the gold standard for american self-defense people you know i think it's adoption in law enforcement really helps out a lot and also the fact that it is so accessible and easy for you know maybe inexperienced shooters or those who are recoil sensitive to handle a cartridge powerful enough to defend your life with now i would say it is probably the most advanced hollow point design out there on the market Sure, there may be other rounds on our list that are going to be more powerful in terms of foot-pounds of energy and things like that, but when you're in the home, you want to have something that's low recoil, it's easy to handle to get those fast follow-up shots, and the 9mm really gives that to you. Plus, you get a lot of bullets in the magazine, which is really nice. And, you know, if you want even more powerful 9mm, there are plus P options out there. Now, of course, make sure that your 9mm is rated for plus P. The 9mm just has enough. It's what We'll get the job done, and it's probably going to be our top pick because it's so inexpensive. And I think that's really one of the other things that has pushed the 9mm up there. Definitely a great option. Now, the second one we're going to talk about, this, of course, is the 40 Smith & Wesson. Yep, uh, people are sick of the 9mm versus 40 Smith & Wesson debate. In mm -hmm. all honesty, they're, they're both very effective. And I feel like uh, the 40 SMW stopping power, despite having that that small fraction of an inch wider bullet isn't all that much greater than the nine millimeters i mean it definitely gives you some more kinetic energy for sure uh and it does give you a little bit wider of a wound channel but it's not a huge amount and we've actually seen a bit of a shift in the shooting community over the last decade i would say where now we've started seeing a shift back towards the nine millimeter and i think that's really a testament to you know the advancements that have made made in the nine millimeter now, of course, that's not to discount the 40. The 40 is an absolutely deadly round. It will get the job done, especially with some uh, some of those hollow points that they have for that. It is definitely a, you know, it can stop the threat. The 40 did have the advantage of being the brand new hotness when it first mm -hmm. came out. But uh, now that, that that boost in popularity just from its novelty has worn off, like you say, the 9mm has kind of taken back its crown. It really has. And, you know, if we want to talk about the crown, we got to talk about the two time World War champ, and that's none other than the 45 ACP. Ah, classic, classic. A lot of people don't want to hear about anything but the 45 ACP, and honestly, yeah. I wouldn't try to convince them otherwise. Boomers love their boomer handguns. You know, Dave, you're absolutely right. The 45 is just an American classic. It just does the job, it packs a lot of punch into a fairly small package. Uh, even though you're shooting that big 45 caliber bullet. Yeah, significantly heavier bullet. You're talking about over half an ounce uh, mm -hmm. of, of, of lead and copper slamming into the target. And that wide bullet really, really scoops out a large wound cavity, even if there is no expansion. You know, that subsonic 45 ACP really packs a lot of punch behind it. Yeah, when you say subsonic, uh, only very unusual, very highly overpressure 45 ACP rounds tend to break the sound barrier. That's true, and it's a real a testament to the design of how well this works. Sometimes, you know, fat and slow hits hard, and that's just all there is to it. And, uh, yeah, you can get plus P variants of 45, but honestly, for home defense, 
your standard, you know, like 200, 230 grain hollow point is going to get the job done. Now, if we're going to talk about wheel guns, we can't discount the classic, and that is the 38 Special. Dave, I know this is a favorite of yours. Yeah, yeah, I love Wild Eyes, uh, Southern Boys. Uh, I think uh, "Hold On Loosely" is one of the greatest songs ever written. It just their whole their whole body of work is phenomenal. Oh, definitely no. And if we're talking about the ammo, 38 Special, just a great all around package, especially when you're packing plus P rounds and a jacketed hollow point, that's going to be a pretty nasty home defense uh, revolver that you can really rely on. If you want a really low recoil revolver, get a 357 uh, revolver, load it with 38 specials. The added heft of the handgun is going to cancel out some of that recoil energy. And a 38 special at close range, I mean, people disparage it for being weak, but it was originally designed for, for military use. Uh, the mm -hmm. Army carried it. So to say it's, it's inadequate is really kind of overlooking its entire purpose. And uh, you kind of alluded to the next one on our list, which, of course, is the big boy. It is the 357 Magnum, and uh, this one packs a punch. Yeah, here we're kind of edging towards the the overpowered range. Uh, the, the main issue with this one is, is your eardrums are going to feel it if you fire this one indoors. Yeah, the 357 Magnum, like you said, is really kind of getting on that hairy edge where we're getting to the point of being a little bit almost too powerful. And by that, we mean over penetration, which, of course, is the bane of any home defense situation because the last thing you want is for that round to exit the bad guy and maybe hit you know an innocent bystander or a family member who's behind the target. But one that's not going to do that is an AR-15 chambered in 300 blackout shooting subsonic rounds. Yeah, and if you can shell out the extra money for the uh, for the tax on it, put a suppressor on that thing, and it's going to keep your eardrums thoroughly unimploded if you ever fire it indoors. With a 300 blackout, literally all you hear is the round impacting and the bolt cycling. It's insane. But I do know that the Hornady makes the Amax, which is a 208 grain that is subsonic. That's pretty decent, uh, a pretty decent choice if you ask me. And there are some specialty rounds out there from companies like Underwood Ammo and Buffalo Bore that can make those subsonic self-defense rounds. Uh, I do want to touch just here quickly on the 5.56. Five, I know we talked about this before we got on the uh, on the show here, but a lot of people like to use the 5.56 five, as a home defense if we're talking AR-15s. And uh, you and I, Dave, were not so keen on that. I figure we should give our viewers reasons why. Well, I'm sure you'd agree it's not a, a tool for self-defense I'd like to be on the wrong side of. Oh, yeah. But, uh, you know, that 55-grain that bullet, uh, almost three times the speed of sound, it's going to go through the target, and it's going to go through many walls. It's uh, yeah. just just a, a bit of a liability. That said, there are alternatives. A very light varmint bullet, uh, mm -hmm. something like the VMAX, which is designed to pretty much self-destruct within inches of impact, and uh, frangible bullets, people often ask if they're suitable for self-defense. They are less likely to penetrate many walls, but they still can penetrate many walls. So it's just not a surefire way to avoid that potentially uh, life-ruining over-penetration that we always allude to. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've got options out there if you want to use a 5.56, five, but not the best choice. But we wanted to put it in the list and kind of talk about it a little bit just so you're aware of it. And now we're going to get to the classic. The one that can't be avoided and can't be understated is none other than the long-standing 12-gauge shotgun. Classic. And we're not advising it over the 20-gauge necessarily. The 20-gauge oh, yeah. is also more than enough gun for home mm -hmm. defense. But you really can't argue with nine pellets of double-hot buck. That's like nine thirty-two caliber bullets coming out of the barrel at one time. Now, I know that the ATF has all things to say about that, but buckshot is still legal. Uh, and, uh, you know, doesn't violate the machine gun clause at all. And if you want pure firepower, pure stopping power, you can't go wrong with the shotgun, whether a 12 or a 20. Let's talk about slugs, because I know a lot of people use slugs for deer hunting. But in, in my opinion, I think a slug's a little bit too much for home defense. And I think it's just going to blow through the target. Well, it's certainly going to subdue the target. It kind of undoes the, the main advantage to having a 12-gauge shotgun for home defense in the first place is it gives you that, that slight margin of error. A um, mm -hmm. shotgun doesn't work like it does in video games. It's not just a, a wide cone of death that comes out of the muzzle. It's still yeah. pretty narrow, all in all. But, you know, a, a pattern that's one or two inches wide could just spell the difference between a miss and the strike that immediately neutralizes the threat. A slug... Again, you're going to get that over-penetration, and uh, you know, for all that recoil you're talking about, you'd really be better off with a uh, 
with a 300 black hour rifle. No, I got to agree with you there, Dave. Uh, slug is just a little bit too much, uh, you know, penetration power to make me feel comfortable using it in the home. But what are some of your favorite home defense cartridges that we didn't talk about? What do you think should have made the list and didn't make make it on there? Make sure you get down in the comments section and let us know. We want to hear from you. We appreciate all of our subscribers here. And of course, if you need any ammo, get it at ammo.com and we'll see you out on the range.